Welcome to Fight City NYC. My name is Ben Chan. I'm here with Dominic Morrow. We're going to talk some UFC and then uh, we've got a couple of uh, news items in boxing. But let's start by recapping UFC 142, uh, UFC in Rio, which ended, uh, most of the fights ended in knockouts and submissions. Yeah, that was a really quick card. Uh, less than two hours from start to finish, I think. Uh, it was done by midnight. It was pretty fun, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, the night started out with Edson Barboza with this crazy spinning wheel, heel, kick. I don't know, there's like 50 different words for it, depending on which martial art you're Landed thin. right on the chin. Right on the chin. Uh, he knocked Terry Edom into next week. I don't know, he woke up with a different accent, something like that. Um, crazy. It was actually a pretty boring fight up until then. I mean, Edom really couldn't close the distance. Uh, Edom managed a few takedowns, got stuffed on most of his takedowns, and, and Barboza just sprang right back to his feet when... Uh, uh, when he did get taken down. So uh, it was mostly leg kicks and jabs from the outside until that kick. Oof. Um, yeah, Edim was down for a really long time, actually. Um, I, I haven't heard anything, so I'm sure he's okay. They have at least one hospital in Brazil and mm -hmm. something. Um, right. But uh, crazy, crazy knockout. Yeah, and then after a uh, controversial 30-second uh, disqualification featuring uh, Eric Silva, Eric Silva yeah. uh, then uh, we went back to submissions and knockouts. Um, we had uh, Pajares uh, submitting uh, Masenzio. Yeah, yeah, Husamar Pajares. Uh, I predicted this one. Uh, I can't really pat myself on the back because this is this is Rusamar Paul Harris's game plan. Walk into the octagon, grab the dude's leg, and rip it off and take the dude's leg home with you. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, Vicenzio knew this. Vicenzio did not want to get into a grappling match, but Paul Harris, you know, he just grabbed a hold of him, pulled guard, grabbed the knee, and uh, yanked on it until it fell off, and Vicenzio starts crying and gets ice, and uh, it, was, it was really ugly, actually. I hate watching that guy mess with people's legs, but it keeps working. Right, and will it keep working as Baharis moves up in competition? I mean, you know, there are a lot of really skilled Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioners uh, in the upper echelons of the, uh, uh, the middleweight division. I mean, there's Damian Maia, who uh, is looking for an opponent, actually. I mean, that might be a thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Mark Munoz and Chael Sonnen, the, they wrestle, although Sonnen's not really the uh, uh, paragon of avoiding submissions. But, uh, um, you know, there, there's lots of top talent that really knows how to grapple at the uh, upper echelons of the middleweight division. Vicenzio was definitely not one of those guys, and he, his knee paid the price for it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the next fight, we had uh, Vitor Belfort uh, fighting, I guess, in a version of uh, the UFC's pink slip match, uh, <laughs> fighting a guy who came in 11 pounds overweight. 11 pounds. The, the weight class is only 15 pounds wide. He came in 11 pounds overweight. Um, yeah, what do you want? Uh, Anthony Johnson was moving up from welterweight, uh, missed middleweight, and landed square in light heavyweight. Uh, um, yeah, bad weight cut. He gassed out like two minutes into the fight. That's really not surprising um, when you've got a, a weight cut that goes so horribly bad that you end up uh, rehydrating on a doctor's orders. Right. Um, you know, uh, Johnson gasses out. Uh, he managed a good couple of punches in the beginning of the round, uh, closed Belfort's eye. I mean, Belfort looked like he'd been in a fight by the time he, he choked out Johnson, though. But. Uh, yeah, no, the fight was kind of a, a, a laugher, it, you know, when uh, Johnson shows up so overweight. I mean, he was going to get fired, win or lose, and, mm -hmm. and uh, um, yeah, Belfort, uh, you know, looked comfortable on the ground. He looked a little bit resilient. Johnson got on top of him at one point, but, you know, didn't... Well, he didn't end the fight. I mean, that's about all you can hope for with Rumble on you. But. Right. Well, at least he got fired in Brazil. There are worse places to be fired. At least the car was in, like, Nebraska. Because I'd hate to be unemployed in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear the unemployment. It's, it's yeah. rough there. So Unemployed in Brazil? Not, not so bad. Sure, but. sure. I mean, there's got to be a McDonald's or something near the arena. Right. right. All right. So, uh, and then in the main event, we had Jose Aldo uh, kicking, uh, or not, not kicking, knocking out uh, Chris Mendes. Yeah, no, uh, this was a uh, hilarious, uh, I mean, you know, before the fight, uh, I said that Chad Mendez really needed to get the fight to the ground. He didn't want to strike with uh, Aldo, and he tried his best. He tried seven takedowns in the first round. Not one of them worked. Um, you know, he, he didn't manage to keep Aldo on the ground. Uh, Aldo just kept getting back up and kick him in the leg. Uh, yeah. And then the, the very end of the fight, uh, this, this crazy spinning knee from the, in, in a sort of a scramble uh, from the, it was a, it was a great knee. Uh, follows it up with some really precision ground and pound and, and Mendez. By the time Mendez gets to his feet, Aldo's somewhere out in the crowd in right. the cheering section. I thought the most competitive fight on the card was uh, Aldo versus UFC security. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. I mean, the, the security guards had, you know, a couple, well, about 100 pounds on him probably. Right. But uh, uh, that was, you know, they, they did a lot better than Mendez did. I mean, they, they, you know, they had a really hard time getting him back in the ring for the interview. I mean, he was having a good time riding around on people's shoulders and waving flags. And yeah, it was... Um, 
uh, one of the most uh, spectacular celebrations I think I've seen. I mean, you know, Barboza was really calm when he uh, he, he got that crazy knockout, but right. uh, Mendez just went crazy and sprints into the crowd. It was so spectacle. what's what's next for Aldo? Well, uh, there's been a lot of talk about him moving up to uh, 155, or uh, at least having a catchweight super fight with uh, uh, Frankie Edgar, uh, the lightweight champion. But uh, you know, Aldo's really young. He's only defended the uh, uh, fl the featherweight title uh, three, four times, I think, by now. So yeah, there's still plenty of work to do in clearing out that division. I mean, there's no doubt about it. He's the best fighter in that weight class. He he's you know annihilated people on his way up to the championship, and he's dominated the best guys in the division and Chad Mendes. Uh, since he's held the title, but uh, um, you know he, he's he's really young. He's 25, 26, something like that. I mean, he's he, there's no reason he can't sit in that division for another couple of years and just you know destroy people uh, continuing with it. There's Hatsu Hiyoki, There's the Korean Zombie. I mean, there's a couple of guys who know how to take a punch. Uh, they could really um, you know be a punching bag for a few rounds. It, it, you know it might not be competitive, but uh, you know you're the champion. Clear out the division. Pull in Anderson Silva. You know do something like that. Okay. And then uh, this Friday on FX, uh, there's going to be a UFC card, and it's free uh, for those who have basic cable. And it's going to start with Pat Barry versus Christian Moorcraft. Yeah, the, uh, none of the fights on this card really have uh, crazy title implications, but they're all they're actually going to be pretty fun. Uh, Pat Barry, this hilarious heavyweight fighter, he's like 5'10", 250 pounds. I mean, he's, he's a very oddly shaped heavyweight fighter. Uh, he's a kickboxer, great leg kicks, uh, really good hands, uh, and he's fighting Christian Moorcraft, who's, you know, a, a heavyweight prospect. The heavyweight division in the UFC is pretty shallow, actually. Um, but Moorcraft, he, he knows his submissions. He submitted a few dudes, um, and uh, his striking is definitely nowhere near Pat Berry level. I mean, he got outstruck by Matt Mitrione in, in uh, his last fight, so he, he really doesn't want any piece of Pat Berry on the on the feet. So uh, this fight's probably going to come down to Christian Moorcraft trying to take down Pat Berry, and he's got you know a good six, seven inches on him, and, and you know another twenty pounds. So he can use his size to drag Pat Berry to the ground, and Berry's no grappler. So um, you know uh, th this fight's going to be Pat Berry trying to stay on the feet long enough to knock out Moorcraft, and it, it could be an interesting fight. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we have a guy named Bang fighting a guy nicknamed the Dentist. <laughs> yeah, Dwayne Bang Ludwig. He's fighting uh, Josh the Dentist Near. And uh, uh, crazy nicknames aside, these guys are uh, pretty sloppy brawlers. Not an awful lot of defense. Pretty solid chins, but uh, uh, nothing approaching, you know, technique. Uh, and neither of these guys, I, I think, is really going to look to take this fight to the ground. This is just going to be a sloppy kickboxing match for as, as long as their chins hold out. Um, uh, near, he's on a bit of a winning streak. I think it's uh, five fights now. But I mean, four of those were outside the UFC against guys with combined like 36 and 24 record. Uh, I looked it up. And uh, eh, uh, not not great competition, so I'm not really sure um, how much of this is momentum and how much of this is just lack of quality competition. But uh, Ludwig, now he's been around for a while. I mean, he, he, both of these guys, you know, veterans, going to be a fun, if really, really sloppy kickboxing match. Okay, and then on the main event on the card, uh, we have uh, two guys uh, looking to get on the comeback trail. Uh, we have Melvin Gillard versus Jim Miller. Yeah, no, this is actually going to be a really fun fight. Um, both of these guys were riding high on winning streaks. Gallard's was uh, like five round or five fights, and Jim Miller was on a six-fight winning streak. They both got really terribly upset in their last fights. Uh, uh, Gallard got choked out in the first minute of the fight against a guy named Joe Lozon, who reads the same nerdy news website I do. I mean, what's uh, that's that's got to be embarrassing. So uh, uh, Gallard, he's. He's a really good striker. He's fast, he's vicious, he's got great power. And um, uh, Jim Miller is a really powerful wrestler. I mean, he, he just he wrestles, he submits dudes, he, he grinds out decisions. Um, he's never been knocked out, but uh, now is not the time to find out how good your chin is against this guy. I mean, nobody, nobody's got a good chin against uh, Melvin Gillard. So uh, uh, this is going to look a lot like the, uh, the Pat Berry Christian Moorcraft fight. I mean, Melvin Gillard wants the fight to stay on its feet. I mean, desperately, he doesn't want to get underneath. Uh, uh, he doesn't want to get underneath Jim Miller. He's Melvin Gillard's got nine losses in his whole career, and eight of them are by submission. So he's not the best grappler. And uh, Melvin Gillard, or uh, sorry, no, Jim Miller. Jim Miller. And uh, Jim Miller. Most of his wins have come by submission. So uh, uh, you know what each of these guys' game plan is going to be. And uh, you just you, you wait to see if uh, the wrestler gets knocked out before he gets to take down uh, uh, the, gr the striker and just lay on him for 15 minutes. Okay, and uh, before we wrap up, we have uh, two news items uh, in boxing that I want to cover. The first of which uh, is that uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Manny Pacquiao spoke on the phone for four minutes. 
There you go. Uh, they supposedly uh, are trying to make this fight happen. Uh, lots of people think that maybe it's going to happen in May or it can't happen in June because Floyd Mayweather is supposed to go to jail uh, in June. Uh, so uh, Floyd Mayweather says May 5th or, uh, or after or it's going to have to happen after he gets out of jail. Uh, he's only going to serve a couple of months, I think. Um, so. Uh, they talked for four minutes on the phone. Uh, I guess that counts as big news uh, in boxing. Uh, not a lot going on so far, uh, although a lot of fights are, are being made. Um, I don't think that they're actually gonna fight in May or June, actually. It seems like uh, Mayweather fight wants to fight on May 5th, and Pacquiao wants to fight uh, in June. And uh, Aram is kind of throwing all kinds of stuff out there, like they want to build a stadium uh, just for this uh, Mayweather-Pacquiao fight, and they can't do it by May. And uh, Okay, fine. Uh, you know, I'm not that interested in talking about what's, what everybody is saying, uh, but I think if this fight does happen, it's going to happen in, in November. Um, but if you want to uh, keep uh, on top of the news that's happening, I would uh, highly recommend going and reading uh, the website badlefthook.com. Um, it uh, has a lot of great contributors there, um, and it's a place uh, to find out about what's happening uh, with that and also the rest of the boxing world. And uh, let's talk about a fight that actually is happening this Friday on Showbox. Uh, we have two guys at 122, uh, Rico Ramos, who's a 20 0. He's a good young fighter uh, versus uh, another, uh, well, he's. I guess a new fighter, but he's not that young. Uh, Guillermo Rigondeaux, who uh, defected from Cuba after uh, being an amateur legend down there, um, he's only had uh, Rigondeaux has only had eight fights, uh, but he's got so much pro experience. Um, so it's a significant fight between two guys, but it's also probably going to be a very boring fight because neither of these guys actually leads in fights. They're both kind of counter punchers. Last time we saw Rico Ramos, he was on the undercard of. Uh, Aris Lady Lava versus uh, Paul Williams, uh, where the judge, uh, where the judges handed Paul Williams uh, a gift decision over Lara. Uh, and if you remember, uh, Rico Ramos uh, fought, a, fought a really good Japanese fighter called uh, Akif Akifumi Shima Shimoda, and uh, the fight was really boring. Uh, and thank God that it ended in the sixth round uh, when, Re when Ramos decided to uh, throw the left hook, and it was a counter punch, and he knocked uh, he knocked Shimoda out. Uh, so he's got some power, but he doesn't lead. And Regan Diao is also a counter puncher, so this is, looks like it's going to be a chess match over 12 rounds. Mm -hmm. um, Ramos might have the edge in power, but Rigan Diao definitely has the edge in skill because he's been boxing for such a long time and he's a very, very, very uh, good technical fighter. Uh, so I, I think uh, Rigan Diao is going to take the fight uh, with a 12 round decision. It's, uh, it's boxing, it's going to be on Showtime, uh, and it's significant. Uh, hopefully it's going to be significant and exciting instead of significant versus boring. Uh, so that's all we have for this week on uh, Fight City NYC. Thanks for watching and take care everybody.